is this lounge. The house is for sale um, and the wanting to me to freshen up the lounge. Uh, the ceiling's going pure brilliant white, matte with the coving. And the walls are getting stripped and lining paper's going on with a coat of matte magnolia and then the woodwork is going white satin wood so on this job what I'm mainly going to show you is lining that wall it's quite a length really um, I'd say it's about 15 foot them units are getting removed so it should make it a bit easier, there's one flat wall so you can have a look at that well, that's the furniture in the middle of the room and I've put a plastic sheet over and I'm going to put dust sheets over that I've removed the light shades removed the curtains and the blinds I've removed the cupboards off the wall so what I'm going to do now is go around and take any picture hooks out and any nails in the wall um, and then start stripping. The room has been stripped now and I've done all the preparation on the walls ready for the lining paper so I'm ready to put up my lining paper on this wall. Um, I've measured it but like I say it's all been filled, sanded down, it's had a coat of PVA. It's quite a rough wall that um, I've marked me level line across the wall leaving an inch overlap at the top I've measured the length and the length leaving myself a good five inches either side it works out to 18 feet three inches So I'll show you cutting that length and pasting it and how you fold it for that. This is the lining paper I'm putting on. Um, this is Gelux from the Gelux Center. It's good stuff uh, and I'm using 1400 because the wall is so rough uh, it needs a good thick lining paper on it because we're emulsion in the walls the paste I'm using is solvite and I've mixed it to quite a thick consistency not too thin six foot the length is 18 foot three inches so you can roll it out to your six foot mark and then bend it back now I know that it's now 12 foot so I've just got to take the tape measure now and work out the rest three inches. So 
you ought to do is roll it back on itself. any creases in it because when it gets uh, wet and it dries out all them creases will just disappear. Now because it's a 1400 and the wall is so rough it needs a good paste, a good layer of paste on it. So I'm going to double paste this um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to quickly Get some paste on and allow that to start soaking in. Making sure there's no bits or any hairs in there. Now I'm trying to be quick with this because I'm filming. Usually I'll probably take my time. There's never any rush. So once you've gone over it the once, go over it again. Making sure you put a nice thick layer of paste on. too much paste because it always dries out but the worst thing you can have is not enough paste and you're going around sticking edges back so that's why I'm double pasting this and then fold it over about a foot and then your next one's a little bit bigger
always want to make sure you've got plenty of pace on the ledges. I'm going to leave that soaking for 10 minutes. It's ready to go up. So, what you need to do is hold in the paper through your, you know, put your fingers in some of the overlaps. Taking off the first piece. Now, you won't be able to see this first bit in the corner, but overlapping by uh, five inches, four to five inches, finding your line. And then once you've found your line, take your hanging brush and release one of the folds following the line. And push your paper about with the paper hanging brush. And then up and down to spread out the paper. And if you get any bubbles trapped, the spread out a lot quicker than you know if you're pushing that way you're just pushing bubbles about straight out and then release another fold keeping on your line straight out another fold It's not too bad. Now once you've got it on, you can go over it and just double check it's on the line. Push any of the bubbles out. And then once you're satisfied with that, what you need to do is make sure the top edge now is nicely tucked in underneath 
because I'm going to cut this using a blade. But what you want to make sure is the paper is nice and tight against the wall. Otherwise, it can tear and you're not cutting in the right place. So I've got a I've got a burglar alarm sensor here, so I'm just going to give a couple of relief cuts around this. I'll leave that and I'll show you trimming along the top. I'll just cut this edge down this side and then I'll show you trimming along the top. I've gone and bought myself a new blade today, I'll just show you. That's what I've bought. Um, Wolfcraft, and this is made in Germany, so precision engineering, hopefully. So, it's already got a blade in. Uh, it feels really nice, that does, nice and solid. Now, I'm going to try and cut it using this. But sometimes what I do is I'll take a blade out and just use a blade because sometimes I find it, um, I don't know, better. But we'll see how this goes first of all and I'll take a blade on, up with me. So don't just pull it along. I kind of jerk my hand slightly. And what I find this does, it allows the blade to cut a lot better. If you just pull it along, it can sometimes like pull the paper with it and it just rips. But this is cutting lovely. That's not cut too bad at all, that. but I'm not just going to pull at it because it could tear the paper in some places. It's just holding on a little bit, so keeping my hand on the paper on the wall and just pulling it straight out. Again, it's not easy cutting wet paper. That's why I prefer to use scissors when possible. Um, on any finished paper, I just really do like using scissors. Um, they just leave a lot better finish. There you go. Now then, once you're satisfied with that, wipe all the excess paste off the wall. And make sure you've not got any on the lining paper because you're emulsioning it. Now what I usually do is I'll go over this a few times, I'll wipe the majority of the paste off, wash my cloths out and then do it again. Just to make sure. One important thing is never leave any bits of paper on your planks, you can slip, slip off. I'll give you a quick, closer look at that. Not bad at all. You know, you can only do your best with the ceiling line. 
Well, that's pretty good. Once that's emulsioned, it'll be good. Right, I'll show you the next one. That's the first length up. Looking good. Okay, ready for the second piece. Now, releasing your first fold, making sure you've got your overlap around the wall, I say four to five inches, and then follow the line along, let out another crease, <coughs> sorry, another fold, and then just you don't have to butt it up straight away because you can spread it out a little bit and then push it up to your line. Now, you don't want it overlapping at all and you can do that by just feeling with your fingers. It wants to be nicely butt up but not overlapped and you don't have to push it up against it. So, basically that's how you put your piece on. Then repeat that process down the wall. It's not easy at all with this 1400. But again, just making sure you're not overlapped and you're nice and bottled. And then you know, spread your paste, your paper out. Making sure there's no bubbles. And that's it. Not an easy piece to pull up that. So you're overlapping the corner. Make sure it's nice and tight in the corner. And then taking your pencil and using your finger to give yourself a little bit of a space. Only has to be like three millimeters. And then just draw a line down. The reason I like leaving a bit of an overlap is so I can you know, pull it off nicely and you've got a bit to play with. You don't have to, you don't have to be too precise because if you're too precise all the time, sometimes you make a mess and you, you, you know, you've not got enough paper to go around an edge because the wall's out. So I always like enough excess paper. There you go, that's all right. Now, the joint is nicely butt up. It doesn't matter too much if there's a slight fine gap, because the paint will fill that on your first coat. And then if anything does show, you can always mix a hard stop and just add a little bit in. But what you don't want is it overlapped at all. And just check that with your fingers. It's nicely butt up. So it just needs a wipe over with a damp cloth now. Right, so that's two pieces up now. Two to go and the wall's finished. You probably can see the lumps of paste in that. Yeah, now don't worry about that because that's what you want. Because as it dries out, it goes smoother. And the top one there, which I did before, that's already started to dry out proper and it's gone really nice and tight and flat. But there's, that's what you want, you want plenty of paste on. So that wall's finished now. Looking a lot better. Not easy at all with the 1400. It's longer soaking time, uses twice as much paste. But when the surface is rough, it's what's, it's what's needed. Difference lining paper makes when you look at the walls over there. Covers over a multitude of sins. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry if I get mixed up with my words now and then, because at the minute I'm suffering with tendonitis in my right arm. Um, AKA tennis elbow. I've had cortisone injections this year, but they've worn off. Um, it's back to agony now.